Yes. 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 All right, then. Uh, if there are no uh, additions or edits, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes as received. Mark Mogul, so move. Thank you, Mark. Bill Gaynor, second. Thank you, Bill. We have a uh, motion to accept and it's seconded. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. We should, yeah, I think you have to have everyone say okay. their name. Mark? Mark, yes. Bill? Bill, yes. Bill? Yes. Yes. I'm also a yes. Excellent. Obviously, no Tony, one. Tony, yes. I'm sorry, Tony. <laughs> Obviously, no, no opposed, no abstentions. So the meeting minutes pass. Do we have any citizens' petitions? Anybody on that we need to be thinking about here? Uh, Apparently is not. Carlton, no. The only person I know is on right now is Mr. Peck from Electric Boat. Okay. Um, given that he's on, I suspect it would be nice to uh, move along to listen to Mr. Peck. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, on tonight's agenda, you'll see two projects that Electric Boat has upcoming in the Groton Shipyard. The first one being the Certificate of permission we submitted to Connecticut Deep for the installation of a 16 foot by 18 foot platform on Graving Dock mm -hmm. 2 North Wing Wall. Um, this platform is going to be constructed to support uh, future construction and testing of, of the subs that we have at Electric Boat. I was supposed to have facilities engineering on to speak about this project tonight, but I can answer any questions you have regarding this project. It's relatively straightforward. We have a vendor, A to Z Core, coming in to install the platform on the graving dock. Um, it's intended to be a permanent structure. And does anybody have any questions regarding that project? Smart Mogul, uh, this won't extend into the river, correct? That is correct. It will not not extend into the river. Okay. It will be overhanging the graving dock to support installation of a um, component of the submarine. That, okay. Uh, that's okay. that's all I wanted. That was my question. Is it over? Okay. The river? I just have a quick question, if I might. This is Bob off from France on uh, okay. the construction times and duration? They're looking to start this project um, late late June. I was, I was given the date um, somewhere around June 25th as a start date and approximately taking two weeks to complete construction. And this construction will be continuing during the daylight hours, is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, it will be. There'll be. I don't believe there will be second shift working for this. It will just be um, standard business hours for us during the day. Very good. Okay. That's my only question. Okay. Thank you very much. I can move on to the next item we have on the list if everybody is ready. Oh, no, hold on. Let's, nope. um, uh, Bob, would you like to make a motion that to be approved so we get rid of each one? I think okay. that would be proper. Um, if we have no other questions, um, I would entertain a motion to uh, go ahead and accept this. Uh, Mark Mogul, so move. Thank you, Mark. Tony Shirley, second. Thank you, okay. Tony. We've had a motion to accept, and it's been seconded. Uh, all in favor? Mr. Mogul. Aye. Mr. Shirillo. Yes. Mr. Gaynor. Yes. Have I got everybody? Except yourself, um, Bob. <laughs> and myself, also an I. So that goes unanimously. Thank you very much, folks.
We will move on now to the second electric boat operation, which is the COP for upgrade and rehab of graving docks one and two pump well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to give a little bit of background on what the pump well is and the function that it serves at electric boat. Uh, the pump well is a 28 foot diameter concrete cell that sits between graving docks one and two. It extends from the top elevation of the graving dock down to the basin floor. Within that pump well, there are currently two platforms that serve as a mounting place for some of the dock pumps and motors we have. And the second, um, second platform serves as access to perform inspections, maintenance, and troubleshooting of the structural components of the pump well, as well as the dock pumps and motors that I just mentioned. Uh, the pump well is flooded to support dewatering operations for graving docks one and two when we have submarines um, performing docking and undocking evolutions. Uh, therefore, since the pump well is flooded, the mechanical and electrical components in the pump well have been exposed to a saltwater environment since they were constructed in the 1960s. Um, a, a recent inspection of the pump well identified the following, structural, mechanical, and electrical corrosion of components due to exposure to salt water. Um, some of the legacy equipment in the pump well uh, was installed in the 1960s and is still present there today. And there was also local water intrusion. Um, these findings in combination with the proposed pump well rehabilitation project schedule proposed for the next five years support the modifications we are proposing for this project. Uh, the project scope includes two parts. The first part, Collins and Jewel Company will be designing, fabricating, and installing three new galvanized steel inspection platforms within the pump well at various elevations. These platforms will allow routine access to inspect machinery and also reduce the amount of staging required to perform work within the pump well. The second part of the project will also be performed by Collins and Jewel Company. They will be constructing a pump service building on the wing wall, um, level of the wing wall up at the very top of the pump well. It will be sitting over top of the pump well to facilitate access to the dock pumps and motors for repairs. It will also provide a barrier from the weather and it will also have a crane inside the building that will allow uh, special equipment lifts and maintenance to be performed if pumps and motors have to be changed out. Uh, if we have the document open, it's, um, there's a diagram of it on page 36 of the PDF that I sent out. Um, that building that we're looking to put over top of the pump well will also house all the electrical equipment that used to be inside the pump well. Therefore, it won't be exposed to the saltwater environment and corrosion should be reduced. Uh, these upgrades will improve access to the pump well and allow routine maintenance slash inspection of the watertight critical items it will also facilitate any equipment replacements that need to be performed. And it will also ensure the electrical control equipment is out of the saltwater environment. Thank you very much. I can answer any questions there are regarding this project at this time. Bob, you are on on uh, mute. You've uh, silenced your mic. You got to unsilence that. Sorry right. about that. Mark, are you good? Um, I'm good with it. Okay, I I do have one quick question. The structure okay. that is going on top of the the well to yeah. house the equipment. Uh, 
what what height above the river will the roof of that end up being? The structure is going to be 15 feet high from the level of the wing wall, so 15 feet up off the current wing wall ground, ground level there. Much lower than the cranes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> And that's going to be constructed in a manner that would uh, wind resistant and hurricane type resistant as well, correct? That is correct, yes. Very good. Anyone else have any questions? No. Do we find that uh, this application is in keeping with the, uh, the harbor management plan? Yes. If so, so then, yes. If so, then I would. Uh, anybody want to put forward a motion? I'll put forward a motion to do that on this proposal. Be accepted. Could you identify yourself, please? Bill Gaynor. Hi. Right, thank you, thank Bill. You. Is there a second to Bill's motion? A second, Mark Mogul. Thank you, Mark. Um, we'll go through this again. All in favor, Mark? Aye. Bill? Yes. And let's see. I guess we Tony, have I. Tony. Tony's out there. So that's three ayes, and I am an I. Bob Austin LaFrance. So that will pass unanimously as well. Thank you very much for the explanation. It was wonderfully clear. The paperwork was amazing. <laughs> okay. I spent, I spent quite a bit of time reading through it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Thank you very much for everyone for your time this evening. You have a good Stay evening. Safe. You're welcome. Thank you. So we will cycle back to CGS 22A-113P. Referral Zoning Regulation Amendment Application, TA-20-1. Has everyone had a chance to look at this? Kind of. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say briefly. Okay, Carlton, my yeah. question is, it's very good for us to have this, but what is it that you expect us to do with this? So, <laughs> it's... Question. It's a referral because some of the, the WBR zone, um, yep. which is waterfront business yep. use, uh, residential yep. use, is um, within your purview because of the shoreline that this that would go, such as Stame Street um, area um, on there. So they're making sure that wherever this may touch another uh, commission, that it's required that that gets that gets referred to, uh, to this. This is a the reg amendment only at this point. They okay. then would come in with a map amendment to pick certain zones, certain yeah. areas that they want to do that. And then they would have to go uh, through a master plan after that. Uh, on gotcha. so, that oh, someone wants to speak? No? Okay. I'm just saying that that makes it much, much clearer than what I was anticipating. Okay. So I have intensification. A basically, it's an intensification of the zone that's not allowed there now. On there, so we yep. we say you say you can only well we only can go up to 35 feet in those zones, and to get higher, you would have to be so much further away from the shoreline, or that you give up more open space so that you can um, go higher. This here is is in if, if we we call it an overlay zone, a spot zoning. Um, uh, on the floating zone is how it's referred to in the papers uh, uh, in there. And so now this, we could put a build in there, intensify an area and go up as high as 60, as six, or 60 feet or six stories, basically, mm -hmm. uh, 10 foot to a story. And then, you know, trying to maintain the parking. Parking rules would be adjusted because what they see in this, what they call mud, it's the multi-use um, uh, design uh, district. Uh, on there, they see more people walking than they have cars. They, you know, they're really starting to think about the next um, 
group of, of aged people that may be buyers in houses and what they what they what they see that they're doing today. They're not so much mobile as much as they like to be very close to their work work environment. Mm -hmm. So I have a basic but, but question, they... if I might. Um, why would you not then just seek a variance for a specific property? My, need, my question yeah. has to do with the fact that this concept of floating is is a little bit bizarre in the sense that if I read it properly, it could be applied to any pieces of property, and I don't have to own all those pieces. So it's based on a certain amount of acreage you had to have, um, and that's why they would give us a map to show after if we take this uh, um, to, to the next step. So they've gone through conceptuals with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Now they're writing the rules uh, on here. They It is based on a certain amount of acreage um, um, on there. And then you would have to express what your hardship is uh, when, with a ZBA um, that you would like to go up 60 feet in the air, which is a lot harder than rules that are written. No developer wants to come in and, and base themselves on Maybe they're going to get a ZBA, maybe they're not um, on there. And you need a very, very good um, argument of why you need to go 60 feet. Monetary is not an argument. You can't use that with ZBA. Uh, everybody would like to have a four family house in their single family district because they can make more money off of it. That doesn't mean that's, that's a true argument on there. But if you write the rules for these and so we understand what they are and they has to happen in a certain amount of acreage on here now, now we can start looking at and seeing this parcels in the city that this could have possibly affect instead of uh, the 4,000 5,000 square foot um, house single family house area you can't do that on that one the six on a um, six story in that 5,000 square feet so, so you're you're basically amending the regulations to apply more flexibility for growth uh, in tax base economic and you know the area's growth the applicant is doing it not the city the applicant is is uh, moving this through on there there are uh, two uh, kind of applicants for this is one in the five there that's why they're called out the five corner districts and the WBR uh, my question is I'll go back to my I, I'm having a problem with the concept because it could Almost any piece of property, as long as it's right acreage. What's the point of having zoning if you load a different set of rules over a certain property? So, um, I, I think I have a more basic question than that, Bob. Uh, my, my real question is: is if we have issues with this should we be taking this up at the public meeting well yes any anybody you know personally can take it up the committee this committee can go in with uh, favorable not favorable or or um, uh, no comment um, uh, as as it's referred to when you go for a zba to the planning and zoning commission um, uh, on there if individually you got some issues with it yes you would speak up at that at that hearing, which is going to be July 13th, this is, a, is this is another a month from now. Uh, this is a, a referral to the Harbor Management Commission because of the proximity to the water that the WBR sits in. The Five Corner District doesn't doesn't touch the water or touch your touch your um, purview area uh, on there, but the WBR obviously does. Well, and also the way, if I understand it properly, this could theoretically be applied to any piece of property in the city no only in those zones with a certain acreage All right well with the acreage All right and the certain zones five corner district and wbr they can't happen in the r12 it can't happen in gc all the other zones it can't happen in oh okay that so i that wasn't apparent in my reading oh okay um, yeah, I, the initial, uh, I, uh, I have to agree with Bob, I think the initial few pages kind of indicate that it's for the large businesses, and there are two, right, Pfizer's and Electric Boat. 
this seems to be focused more uh, electric boat and north of electric boat and not the area between electric boat and Pfizer's. That's correct. This is not that area. That's an IT zone, uh, IT and I, I forget the other the other zone because we've changed all the all the, 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 the nomenclatures around of what they were over the last couple of years. So no, it is not that property in between in between there. The WBR is on Thame Street. Uh, it goes up like maybe a few houses up each one of the roads that come off Thame Street and there and the five corner district is up by um, uh, Buford's all the way down to um, Dunkin Donuts area. Um, and there that's that's what that's F, F five corner district. So they're looking, you know, at mixed use when they're when they're talking about the mixed use that they're inside here. Um, it, it is uh, truly. Uh, um, business use on the bottom storefronts or or, or personal businesses uh, engineering and then um, residentials above. Um, on there. It's just that we've never offered to go this high before and to make these properties work. Um, they're unique, you know, they're obviously unique properties. And when you come down to a triangle at the end of a five corners, you're trying to fit uh, enough housing in to make this worthwhile because it's, you know, it's uh, parking, it's uh, moving uh, driveways around um, so that it fits everybody else's area uh, on two very popular roads, the Paquanic, well, three, re really, right? Paquanic, Benham, and uh, Thame Street. Well, I mean, if you want, if they, Carl, I don't understand. I mean, if you're going to, who's speaking, I mean, who's speaking if please? If you're going to make a zoning change to a certain area, why don't, why don't you guys consider making a zoning change to a certain area? And then if not, then don't. And they can submit a variance or, you know, an application that can go between, you know, planning and zoning and get referred over to us when applicable. So they are, that's exactly what they're doing. They're applying this regulation. They would like to write this set of regulations for certain zones. It's not throughout the whole entire city. Yeah. They are, they're I very, very particular. Five corner district and, and the WBR, waterfront business residential. Okay. And I see where they say they wanted to add the new section 5.4 to the zoning regulation. So that's what they're requesting. Right, this is how you do a zone change. After, mm -hmm. after the plan of conservation and development is done, the 10 year plan, and then based on that, new zoning regulations come in effect. Well, between those periods, some new things may happen in the, in the, in the structure of your city or town that would say, hey, developers would come in here. We've, had, we've been approached by two pretty substantial developers who would like to do a project, but they, they needed to have multiple units to this. And for them to do that you know, is to go up. Um, they have the, the walkability section of this, right, to the two major employers, Pfizer and Electric Boat, um, yeah. in, in here. And uh, they, they, that's why they're looking very particularly at businesses that want to go with these that support the same two areas on there. Now, will other great auxiliary units come with this? Uh, such as uh, a, a, another coffee shop or another pastry shop or, or some other um, a, a better looking subway um, on there. I can, I can tell you that's one of the big things that would happen is that you would get a, a you know, a, a better looking subway um, and with a real cleaned up street corner at that point if they do something in, in that area. So this, this is uh, Mark Mobile again. I, I think I think all, our only judgment here is is whether or not uh, we want to, uh, you know, as Carlton said, approve or have no comment against it, or what was the third one? Or uh, or, or uh, disapprove. Uh, or disapprove. You, yeah. you so, but it it has to. Do, I think I think we're we're bound. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Bob, but we're bound to. Does this uh, violate the uh, harbor management requirements? Okay. So, correct. If you got something what personal you, about what, it, what, absolutely, you come to the Planning and Zoning Commission open right. here at night, and you and you and you and you set yourself there. Yeah, I think I think all our comments about uh, other things are uh, belong in the other meeting. Right. Right. 
I'm not like disagreeing with anybody's comments, by the way. I'm I'm just pointing out that yeah, no, I, I think they're not um they're not the purview of this group uh, as we are set up. I'd like to hear what the staff's uh, concerns might be slash what uh, Mr. Smith may may think of this as it applies to our group. Carlton, I apologize for jumping in, but can people please say their names before they speak so that it can go on the record? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that was Tony Shirillo. I apologize. Well, looks like Bob fell off and he's calling me. <laughs> Hello, Bob. You lost it? Okay. I will put you on speakerphone close to my uh, camera phone here, my cam my uh, speaker. Can can we hear Bob? Bob, go ahead, speak. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep, they can hear you. Yep. Okay. I don't know why, but everything just shut down. Yeah, okay. Um, you didn't pay your electric bill. So, uh, <laughs> so Tony Shirillo, so for, for the record, it was requested that when we speak, we, we say who we are so Deb Patrick can make sure she's catching the minutes mm -hmm. right of who's, who's saying yeah, what. Yeah, I acknowledge that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to go to Mr. LaFrance. He, he was off online on there. So okay. staff, staff to the Harbor Management Commission has really no comment to this. Uh, on, uh, at this time, uh, we haven't seen anything that would bring bring it to us uh, for Correct. for a visual um, on there. Right. You know, they'll have to build above all these places. Will have to be built above the floodplain. They get, um, when they come in, they got they've got to meet those criteria. Um, they'll have to meet some of the some of the wind speeds um, items with this. And once an idea is is now concrete and they they would come back before you to to do to show you that like i said the next round you will see is the mapping if this gets approved that the planning commission planning and zoning commission approve these rules the next piece of this is now to show what areas uh that will highly be affected on that and that's when you would really get a real look to understand uh, who's got enough parcels uh, together by an owner or a group of owners that goes in as an LLC to um, to make something happen of that size. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah, that it's many parcels that we pull, that, that can pull this off. So, Carl, Carl yeah, you, you, you never know what you, you never know what the future is going to bring. So, um, they may consider adding to this section. Um, you know requires approval by our committee i'm not sure well what you for the harbor management committee you'd want to make sure whatever effluents that were coming out of there was not being influenced into the into the river or the sound um you would yeah. uh, make you know uh, hey, we're not going to put the garbage uh, so the garbage truck has to go all the way out to the water to get it right and, i mean those are the kind of influences that you would have if if this was to go through through its whole process this was mark mogul i don't see this as being any different than the zoning that's there now in terms of harbor management because all the harbor management stuff will still apply is is that a correct statement carlton that is a correct statement Good. so i'm i'm so intrigued as to why you wouldn't just Ask for a zoning variance. Why this is going to be put into, you know, codified quite the way it is. It it seems a little bit loosey goosey. I mean, a, a developer will not spend the time in here if he doesn't have a true answer that he he or she can do that here. To go and put in for a zoning board of appeals um, on a reg for to include something that's outside the zone zone is very very difficult and well there's a reason for that that's why the zoning regs were written and that's why they're asking to to put these in they're asking to put these in because of that they were they were written at a time when there was not thought that they needed that kind of uh, storefronts and and high store uh, high high uh, 50 foot high buildings the only place that we can do set high, if you remember, is, is electric boat and Pfizer's, and they had to come and get ZBAs because of the height of their buildings. Right. They, they yep. got variances. 
that's so, the way everybody does it. You know, I, I'm sorry. So I guess I, I guess if they want to change the, the zone, the because but, these guys want to do something, we're going to turn things around. That's I mean, I obviously that's up to the zoning folks to figure out. So the only reason here's wow. here's a great example: the electric boat got a variance for the height of the building that they currently build we call building 600 because of the size of the submarine that has to be built first and the crane height that needs to go over it has to be double that's that was a hardship that's the size what's the hardship because i want to go up six stories and put livable space on it yeah. that's why they're writing zoning regulations to know that they can do it and they can spend the spend the money to do the design to get to that next level Otherwise, they're they're really working hard against themselves. I think you were right to begin with, Rob. I think if planning and zoning, uh, you know, they get they get to look at this, and if they approve it, uh, we can all speak at a meeting, uh, at you know, public meeting or whatever if we desire. I I think for the moment, and, and I'm not trying to speak for the committee, but. Um, um, have no comment and then request you know obviously if, if something is going to come down that it comes to uh, you know something that's in the affects the shoreline in any way that, that we have a say in what goes on with that um, at the moment I think it's up to zoning to decide whether they want to adopt these changes And so they're asking the commission, this commission, as we do, we had to send it over to New London um, Harbor Management Group I, I, uh, over there. We had to send it to Groton uh, Town because it's an abutting um, position to us and the SCOG and somebody else, um, uh, Deep. I think we sent it also over to Deep because it's a rule change um, uh, for the for our planning and zoning, not for, not for Harbor Management. Uh, right. uh, on it. These are referrals, and then, you know, favorably, unfavorably, or no comment. I, I, I make a motion let me, we... Let me pull the... Let me commit. Mark, Mark Mogul, I make what a motion. Is, Mark, what is your feeling on this? Uh, Bob, I make a motion that we forward with no comment. I... Okay. Bill Gaynor. Bill Gaynor, I absolutely second that. All right. So the discussion. Okay. So, <laughs> problem. Where does that leave us? Do you think? Well, you're in discussion now. You, you've got a you've got a motion and a second, and now you're you're in discussion, and that's up to the your commission. I ask, ask for a vote. If there's no discussion, then you would ask for the vote. Exactly. Right. So I will. There is a motion on the floor that has been seconded. Would you mind repeating the motion so that it can be uh, marked down properly? Okay. Uh, this is Mark Mogul. I, I make a motion that we forward with no comment. Thank you very much. Bill Gaines. All in favor, Bill Gaines, one at a time. Mark. Uh, yay. Bill. Yes. And Tony. Aye, aye. So we have a unanimous no comment for the time being. Wait, do you vote it? You voted yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes. yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. My feeling is that. Nope. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, I have some. I, I, I know uh, when you get to correspondence, I'd like to s say a few things. Okay. I think that uh, we can do that right now. Okay. Um, uh, w one of our Harbor Management commission Commissioners had pointed out to me a few weeks ago uh, about Avery Point and the wall falling between, I guess we'll call it uh, the groin, is it the groin area? 
between Avery Point and the um, Shenacostic Yacht Club. Yep. Uh, Shenacostic on, Beach Club. Beach? No, Yacht yeah. Club. Yeah. Yeah. Club. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, we hit, we got over to the state once they took some they got some pictures of it. I went over and looked at it. I got a hold of uh, Avery Point and they have put people on it it's now a top priority there's a, just not this one spot there's a couple of spots that are failing pretty quickly over there and i want to thank the commission for noticing it and and bringing it to our attention and we're getting good response back from uh, the state of connecticut avery point or yukon to um, to uh, uh, hopefully get this in in, in proper order and it's not an easy job it's not the it, you know it's it's quite a bit of money. They're going to have to move budget items around to make that happen right now. But they are aware yeah, of it. They've they, already... they, and they and they put okay. up, uh, barriers over there so people don't go on yeah. that side to um, to those caving in. Yeah. Uh, the second thing was uh, Jeff Dizek did call me today. We if you remember, there was a case um, uh, Paralazzi um, against Jeff and deep. Uh, they did get a, they did get a ruling on it uh, from a judge. Uh, they the judges are working, and the ruling was in favor of uh, Deep and Jeff Dizik that uh, there that mooring does not exist um, on there. I imagine the paralazis will will appeal it, uh, but they have a certain amount of time. But with this COVID thing, they probably get a little more time to pull that off. But the the first ruling from the judge is that it is in, in, in a written ruling too. Is that um, in favor of uh, the harbor master for removing the block and uh, and that there does not have a mooring uh, there? Where is the location of this mooring? Well, they 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 had put it over there by the um, uh, Bayberry boat launch right off the kayak area. Yep. They dropped an engine block uh, last year over there. Yep. And put a big whip in the air. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I'm sure the Parazani's aren't happy, but that's too bad. <laughs> right, but I mean, it, it it went through the court system, and and, and everybody uh, had their had their time for, with the judge, and that's what came back. Um, otherwise, than that staff has no other comments. Excellent. Does anyone else have anything for the good of the, the troop? No, Mark Mogul, no. Bill Gaynor, no. Hearing nothing. Hold on, Tony. Uh, Tony Chirillo, nothing. Okay. Well, thank you all very much for your time and your concentration here. Um, I will call this meeting adjourned, and we will meet again in one month. If, if we have applications. If we have applications. <laughs> we'll schedule a meeting. Let's put it that way. <laughs> When's our next yeah, face, when's person. our next face to face meeting? So we 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 plan next, on yeah. with the that, that's a great question. We plan on if in July that the commission I think we can have uh, where, where was this uh, 10? ten ten up to ten uh, on there and so we are trying we if we get an application we will bring the commission in and all the applicants will be online so that we're maybe can stop some of this um, fun that we all have at last minutes trying to get things working. <laughs> Very good. And we'll look forward to seeing each other in person rather than on video. Yeah. Or not. Thanks again, everybody. Stay safe. Yep. Have a good night. Be healthy. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. <laughs>